name is Nami and I went on my first solo trip to the Philippines and I absolutely loved it. This is episode three, so if you haven't seen episode one and two, I recommend checking those out. Kind of a storyline going on, but do as you wish. Links are down below. And while you're at it, if you enjoy travel and stories and travel stories, <laughs> subscribe to my YouTube channel. And maybe you might like checking out my Instagram page. I also post things there. Anyway, let me pick up where I left off. So I took a crazy, windy, curvy, six hour long van ride from Puerto Princesa to El Nido, and oh my golly gosh, <laughs> was I glad to get off of that van. Thank you. I'm in El Nido. I stayed at Spin Designer Hostel and it was awesome. I wish I filmed more of the hostel, but you know, I was feeling shy, okay? <laughs> I'll have to film more next time. Anyway, I had a private room to myself and it was extremely clean and might I add that those beds were so comfortable. The internet was really good and stable and the hostel was in a really good area, super convenient. It was like less than a five minute walk right into town. And the staff was so friendly and nice. I actually got to hang out with all of them one night. Anyway, you can book a boat tour from the desk, a selection of tours listed A, B, C, and D. So that's what I did. I booked a tour, tour B, I think. <laughs> going on my first island hopping tour in El Nido. Woo! As I was walking to go on this tour, I had no idea or expectations of what I was going to experience. I mean, aside from the little pictures that you see in the tour book or of who I was going to meet and become friends with. And to be completely honest, I wasn't expecting to make friends on this tour. I was just going on this tour to experience the tour. <laughs> I don't know, like a lot of the time when you travel or even when you're not traveling and you meet new people, you might have a good chat and good interaction and stuff, but then like you never see them again, which is fine. But it wasn't like that this time. I actually made friends who I still talk to today. Where are we going? We're going to the big lagoon. I made this is Ina and we like clicked instantly and became each other's photographers on this tour. So I'm trying not to. But anyway, it's beautiful over there. After the secret lagoon, we stopped at this little island for lunch. It was so pretty. The water just glitters in the Philippines, man. Glitters. And the food wasn't half bad. We are here at uh, Shimizu Island. Kuya? Shimizu, Shimizu Island. Island. Oh, yeah. and she just got me a coconut. You. Thank you. But the beach Next up was the big lagoon and let me tell you something I was not ready the beauty of this place You'll see just watch Is that not the bluest water you've ever seen in your life? Well, I mean, I don't know where you guys have been. Maybe you have seen bluer water than that, but that was the bluest water I've ever seen in my life. It was like Kool-Aid, but cooler. I was just nearly crying happy tears on that whole entire lagoon tour. Ina could tell you because she was laughing at me the whole time because I was like, 
Anyway, they give you about a half hour to paddle around in your kayak, and they only allow a certain amount of tourists to come to these locations in a day, so it wasn't overcrowded at all. It was wonderful and peaceful and silent even, you know, because the whole lagoon itself is surrounded by these really tall, jagged stone cliffs. So you only hear like what's in the lagoon, just faintly. And Ina and I just had the most amazing heart-to-heart -heart conversation about life and travel and all kinds of things while just sitting on this extremely crystal clear blue topaz colored freaking water. I swear I'm not overreacting. This place is just so extremely beautiful and I am just a sucker for great beautiful scenery and blue water and all kinds of stuff anyway. So it just hit me like boom. <laughs> This was another one of those moments where it felt like time stopped for just a moment. Except this time I got, I got to share it with somebody, so that was nice. After the big lagoon, we made another stop on another island and I got to try Halo Halo for the first time. Oh yeah, and some beans. Ooh. This is my first time trying Halo Halo. Oh. So what does Halo Halo mean again? It means mix mix. Oh. Exactly. Yeah, it's already right. good. <laughs> so I have to mix up everything yeah, like this. Yeah, you have to mix everything. <laughs> okay, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Very good. You should eat this one. What is that? The coconut gel. The Nathalie one. Very delicious. <laughs> So after we ate our Halo Halo, Ina wanted to take pictures while we were at this beach. While we were taking photos, this guy and girl who were also on our tour came up to us. I think they were from Russia or the Ukraine or something like that. And the guy was like, hey, can I have a picture? And I said, oh, you want us to take a picture for you guys? And he said, no, I want a picture with you. I looked at him, and then I looked at Ina, and then I looked at the girl that he was with, and she was already ready with her phone out to take a picture of me and him together, like... <laughs> we all started laughing, and I was like, okay, fine, whatever, you can take a picture with me? <laughs> After the picture, he was like, I'll tell my friends you are American girlfriend. I was like, okay. <laughs> whatever, it was harmless. This is the picture that Ina got anyway of that situation. was this snorkeling spot. To be honest, there wasn't really much to see there and the jellyfish were on full blast, relentless. You can't even see them to avoid them. It's just like you're swimming and the next thing you know, you're like, ah, 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 and then you're rushing back to the boat to get out of the freaking water. I just can't imagine how these guys are used to see these like every single day. I was thinking I could live here. We became friends on this trip because it was a funny story. When Ina and I were heading back to the tour boat from the big lagoon, you know, the really pretty one, we saw John in a kayak by himself also heading back, but he was like really struggling against the waves. And we were about to pass him and then he looks at us and says, this is so difficult, this is so hard. I hadn't thought it was too difficult, but then I looked at his paddle. The paddles that Ina and I had to row our kayak were legit, okay? Big ol' wide paddles at the end for good grippage of the water so you can move swiftly and quickly. Don's paddle looked like a stick. <laughs> His paddle was so thin. <laughs> I don't even know how he managed to get anywhere in that lagoon. So Ina was like, oh, we should help him. So he pulled alongside his kayak and then Ina switched her paddle with his and then he was able to paddle his way back to the boat and I paddled Ina and I back to the boat myself because I like a good fitness challenge. <laughs> and once we got on board, he was like, you guys saved me. And then we became friends and hung out in Caron. When Ina and I got back from the tour, we went to the best pizza spot on the island and it was so, so good. Cheers! Yay. <laughs> and when we came back to the hostel, they were hosting like a gender bender party or something like that. So the guys were dressed up like girls, girls were dressed up like guys. And uh, yeah, our hostel would like host different kinds of themed parties every day. So we just joined in in our normal clothes and then like the music came on and then all the staff members got up and started like dancing and stuff. And if anyone knows anything about me, I cannot resist dancing when there is good music, man. So I jumped in there and started dancing with everyone. We were like getting down low and breaking down, dancing and stuff. And man, Filipinos can dance. I love it. I had no idea. I'm like, where have you guys been all my life? Where have I been all my life? <laughs> I should be here. <laughs> anyway, around 11 p.m., everyone from the hostel party kind of went out and went to this one popular club in El Nido town. Some people got lost along the way. Some people got 
extra turnt. <laughs> so I did help the staff out with that a little bit. And then by the end of the night, it was just um, me and two other staff girls and they took me to get some midnight Filipino food, which was like the best sober up food ever. It was like some kind of like mixed beef thing with rice. It didn't look that appealing, but it was just like a flavor explosion in your mouth. <laughs> I wish I could remember the name of it. And then we got some noodles and we just shared everything. I also got a chance to talk to them because I'm always curious about what the people of a country that I'm visiting think about their country. We talked about a lot of things having to do with the Philippines, like secret places to go and then uh, safety and their opinions about their own country, which were extremely positive. I learned so much that night. <laughs> it was really nice just to chill with two locals and hear their perspective on things after a long semi-drunken night out over some delicious midnight Filipino food to sober up on. <laughs> anyway, I think I spent another day or two in El Nido and then I booked a ferry ticket to Coron, which was a pain in the badonkle to get for the next day. And that was a six hour long ferry ride from hell. But I'll save that for episode four. <laughs> Have you ever been to El Nido? What tour did you do? A, B, C, or D? I think there might be more than that. Anyway, please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And thank you so much for watching and for subscribing and for commenting. I read all your comments. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you soon in episode four of my solo trip to the Philippines. Bye!